And there are many egg banks nowadays that provide uh, frozen eggs. And we always get the question, you know, why not to take frozen eggs? And the advantage is very obvious. Uh, they're available right away. It's usually cheaper and you don't need to synchronize them and so on. Uh, and that's absolutely true. Those are all advantages. Um, the, I would say that most fertility specialists still have more a, a higher comfort level with fresh eggs um, for a couple of reasons. One, when you do a fresh cycle, all eggs belongs to you, at least you know in the US. I know that in Europe or some other countries, you only get batches. But in the US, even egg donor produce 20, 25, 30, 40, 50 eggs all belongs to you, which at the end of the day provide a much larger number of embryos. Now, something to remember in the process of IVF or egg donation, the numbers tends to go down a lot. An example, let's say we have an egg donor that we retrieved, we extracted 20 eggs. Of those 20 eggs, probably about 15 or 16 are actually usable. Of those 16, when we fertilize them, probably about 14 or 13 will become embryos. Of those embryos, when we keep them in the lab to see which of them will keep developing to the final stage called, we call them day five or blast embryos, we lose about 50% of them. So now we're down to about seven embryos. Of those seven embryos, when we check them for chromosomes, only about four are normal. So you can see how on average you would start with 20 retrieved eggs to end up with about four or five usable embryos. So you can see how, why you need this higher number. And again, we, don't, we want people to end up with at least four to five usable embryos because we take into account that there could be a miscarriage, a failed cycle, and we also want you to have enough embryos for a sibling journey. So you can see when you use frozen eggs, you only usually get batches of like eight or 10. So you from the beginning work with half of the amount of eggs that you would have worked with fresh. Um, what we've learned with frozen eggs, at least, you know, in our practice, and we use frozen eggs and successfully, they thaw very well. So the survival rate of frozen eggs is great. I would say 90%. They fertilize very well. So we get a very good fertilization and they produce a good amount of blast, very similar sometimes to fresh. What we do know, pregnancy rate seems to be a little lower than we have with fresh. Uh, if you look at the scientific literature, um, it's you know pretty much equivalent. But our experience of like in the in the clinical uh, practice is that pregnancy is a little bit lower, um, so a little bit lower pregnancy rate, and you're working with less eggs, and that's one of the biggest one. Um, and and the third one, which is not a concern, but I don't know that we have the answer, when we uh, freeze embryos from fresh eggs. So we retrieve the eggs and the eggs are fresh. We fertilize them, we grow them, we do the biopsy for the genetic testing and we freeze them. And then when we wanna use them, we thaw one embryo and transfer it back. When it comes to frozen eggs, we retrieve the eggs. The eggs then get uh, frozen. So we already froze them one time, then we thaw them then we fertilize them, and then we freeze them again. So the literature doesn't, you know, we don't have any data that, ex that explains it as a concern, but you know, it's the back of the mind. So I think that the advantage of frozen eggs is really financial, meaning if women want sometimes to have frozen eggs and cannot afford to have a whole fresh cycle, then frozen eggs is absolutely, you know, a, a viable option. And it's definitely a very viable option if women, if couples, women or singles wants, or men wants to have only one child. Uh, you know, but again, there is the pros and cons.